Hey everyone, hello. All right, another activity. Um, we're doing some different activities here. So another one is our letter Z. It's a zigzag fidget, a zigzag pocket fidget. So we did do another pocket fidget. It was our hexanut, hexnut pocket fidget, where we used string or lace and had a row of um, hex nuts on there to use as a pocket fidget. So here's another pocket fidget. It is using beads. Okay, and this is if we have beads um, at home. If we don't have beads, what can we use? Again, maybe those hex nuts and just in a different kind of a pattern. Um, if you don't have the beads, what else? We can maybe just even, um, depending on what we have, like paper or cardboard, just anything that has a little hole in it that can be laced. Um, you can use your creativity, but, but really it's for beads. Um, so if we have beads, we can do it. It's our zigzag pocket fidget. Let me show you what we're gonna do. Okay, so again, I have a piece of lace um, for this activity. So a little lace string here. Um, you can also do it with just a regular string or rubber band, dental floss would even work, whatever you have. Okay, so our zigzag um, pocket fidget. Okay, and I'm doing a lot of fidgets because the fidgets are cool when you make your own. It kind of gives it a little special value to it as well. Um, you know, sometimes it's cool to buy one and to have one that looks really neat, but there's something special about making your own, as well as it's getting a good opportunity to use a lot of our fine motor skills, you know, our, our grasp patterns, our coordination, bilateral skills, um, manipulation. So it's, it's fun to make it and it's beneficial. Okay, so we take one bead and similar to our hex nut pocket fidget, put our lace or our string through both sides and we pull it together. Okay, trying to keep it <clears throat> so that the string is even. It doesn't have to be perfectly even, but for my first one, I try to keep it a little bit more even, pull it and keep it tight. So the pattern is one, two, and then it's gonna be a bunch of threes, but you can always do your own way. You could do a pattern with different colors. <coughs> Excuse me, so once we get our first one, the second one is two beads. Gets a little tricky here. See if we can lace two beads. Okay. We pull it through. And you might have to guide it a little bit just to keep it on top. Right, and it ends up being one and two. Okay, and our next one is three. So again, if you're doing a certain pattern, oops, <laughs> that's a bead bowling. Ooh, that could be a good one, bead bowling. Okay, so, <laughs> hey man, be careful with the beads. They tend to have a mind of their own. So they don't have to all be together. We could do like a one, two, it might even be more challenging, right? To get it on one at a time. And then here, one, two, three. Okay, once there's a little bit coming out, we just pull it through. So it's also a good way to work on lacing lacing skills, um, and again, a lot of those fine motor components of um, coordination, manipulation, grasp patterns. Okay, get it on, nice and tight. One, two, three, all right? You can move on to four, you can continue with the three. I'm gonna keep a three. Okay, and just make sure that it's nice and even here. So I might need to just turn it a little. So when I'm using the lace, the lace can really dictate the direction based on how it's turning. The string might be better because of that. Um, you know, if the lace is twisted, then it's gonna start to twist the whole thing in that direction, but it's okay, we can work with that. Okay, so we have our one, two, three. 
So I'm going to stick with the three and go here. One, two, right? This is like in hand manipulation with stabilization, right? My back two fingers are stabilizing the string while these fingers are doing work. Um, but that's just some OT jargon. Okay, so one, two, three and pull it through. So it's really like a whole hand type of exercise here. Okay, and so here's our pattern where it's just one, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, maybe three or four more times. So it's gonna be like this, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. All right, so let me just fast forward you while I get these on. Okay, so hang tight. Okay, so I said I was going to do the four, but I'm not because I'm actually running out of lace here. So I want to end it with going back down also. So hopefully we have enough lace for that. So I've just been doing like this. One, two. And pull. Okay, we might just have enough here, but it's going to be a little tight. For our last one, let's see. Let's see if we can make it work. One. So it's a little tight, right? You might need a little bit more lace than what I started with, depending on how big you wanna go. Okay, and then our last one, I wanna lace it through one more time. All right, I'm gonna have to take a layer out. Ari, right, bear with me. See, they're, they're coming live. These videos are coming live, which means real time, and you can see all my <laughs> mistakes as well. Okay, but you can learn from my mistakes. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, do the two here. And the reason is because I want to make sure that there's enough room to show you how to close it. Okay, so we do our last one, number one. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Okay, so it should look like this. All right, comes our zigzag. Zigzag, All right, so our last one, we just do one more time. So it really is, especially if you don't have enough lace, it really is a nice fine motor, um, testing that fine motor skill activity. Okay, so this is just a way to lock it up with the lace because it's not so tight with the lace. Um, and I wanna make sure it stays in place with the string, it might be a little different. So really just kind of go with the flow of what you have and see what's the best to use. Um, I'm really running on short lace here, but what I wanna do is just get one last lace in. And there we go. All right, so this is just a sure way to lock it in. Okay, so you can make it bigger. My lace was a little bit smaller. Small, I have a one, two, Three, 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 two, one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total, right? So the middle is only four of these. So you can make yours at home one, two, three, four, and have the middle be four, um, maybe even up to five, six, depends how many beads you have, depends how much string or lace you have. Um, and then remember, if you have extra, just like we did in that hexa nut pocket fidget, we can tie a knot so that there's a little loop over here. So I miscalculated how much string I need. So again, learn from my mistakes, take some extra string. You can always cut it off at the end. But I wanted to leave a little loop here so that I can have this on my finger, right? So it's a comfortable way to carry it. So, um, you know, it's, it's just gonna hold on my finger, kind of just like this, right? Just holding on my finger. If it was a little larger, then it would fit around my finger. And I could just use my finger to hold it or my thumb in here to hold it or get it around my ring, 
right? So I can have it on the keys, have it on a backpack, have it on a bag, have it somewhere. And it just becomes a nice fidget, right? There's some nice movement in here. We can roll it, right? It's called our zigzag fidget, um, zigzag pocket fidget, right? Because we can zigzag it as well. So it really kind of looks like some kind of animal, like maybe like a snake or a worm or a caterpillar, right? What do you think? It looks kind of like an animal, right? So this is just like a quick demonstration. If you wanted to, you can make a pattern on here, make zigzagging colors, right? A zigzag pattern would be a cool one um, or any kind of colors, schemes, patterns, you know, or just how I did random, but it becomes a nice little fidget tool right? Not a fidget toy, but a fidget tool, because tool means that it can be used in a way to, you know, be purposeful, right? Tools are things that help to accomplish something, right? Help to build, right? Like a tool in, uh, in the uh, garage, for example, something that can um, create or build or take apart, be used meaningfully, right? Be used with purpose, with intention to do something, so same here, right? We, we use our fidget tools to use them purposefully and intentionally, right? And the way we use our fidget tools could be just to hold under the table and just go back and forth with one finger, with another finger, right? Just with our hands. Or it can be used um, at times of stressful situation where maybe we need some kind of calming input, some structured, uh, organized experience into our brain, which we can get through our, our fidgets, right? So just working our way up and down the fidget, maybe counting one, two, right? You can spin one at a time and count how many beads are on here. One, two, three. Five, which just helps us to get like a mindful awareness of it. So these pocket fidgets are cool um, because you can really design them on your own. You can make them any kind of which way that you want. And whenever we make it on our own, it tends to give it more meaning. So it, it makes it, you know, cooler and just more likely to be used. So a couple of different ones in our 30 day series here. So just another one for our letter Z, our zigzag, zigzag, right? Some zig and some zag, our zigzag pocket fidget, okay? And it would really help if I made a zigzag pattern too, but maybe you guys can make one and truly have a nice zigzag pocket fidget, okay? Our zigzag pocket fidget, all right? So hope it is helpful, hope you enjoy. Thank you so much everyone for watching. Bye.